to do Donald. So it's like it's like that differentiating factor. So I hesitate to say I'm the official voice, but I am currently the only one doing me. So I'm the current voice. But as it stands, like all of us, even you know Bill and Brett and Tony and and Tress McNeil and and Jody Benson, you know all of the character voices, we are day player contracts. So we're hi basically we're hired and fired the same day. And we'll, or, or like we sign the contracts for a season of a show, and we do that season, and it's it, it's their goodwill where they're like, oh, we're gonna keep bringing them back, and it, it's just kind of easier all around. And I am a I'm a voice actor by trade. I'm not just Minnie, and they knew this, and they definitely knew I did Mr. Pickles when they hired me for Minnie. So they can't bring that back as leverage. Um, but for sure. I, I've done stuff for DreamWorks, for Nickelodeon, for uh, Cartoon Network, so I definitely work around a lot. I never use the mini voice for other characters. Like, if, if I'm gonna do a high voice, I do, I do a, I adjust it enough to be different. Like, they may hear threads of it, but it's not gonna be obvious. And then if I were to do something like Drawn Together or, you know, Blood of Zeus on Netflix or, or, or any, any, animated show that's over PG-13, if it's if it's harsh enough, I'll do a pseudonym just to kind of protect that connection to the brand. Um, but like, I think Fox Animation is like the top tier I would go under my name, depending if I, any roles I do, because it's pretty, it's fairly tame by today's standards. But anything after that, if it was that big, I would do a pseudonym. And, or, or if I went under my name because I really wanted the credit to my name, it's like a passion project, I won't promote it or talk about it. That way it's like, if you discover it on your own, you discover it on your own, but I won't draw attention to it. And it's the same with coming to conventions. They, they don't want it to be pushed as the voice of Minnie Mouse, just in case you might break the magic for a little one. So they'll be like, you know, oh, voice actor, Mickey Mouse Funhouse, Thundercats Roar, Amphibia, so they'll list the shows or like the banners, it'll have Minnie on the banner, but it'll also have like my other big characters as well. So she's one of the herd. So it's all about the semantics. They're okay with me coming. It's just like, make her one of the herd. Those who know will find you. And if, if kids kind of discover it, it's on their terms where the magic won't be broken. It'll, it'll be like a party trick to them. But it, they're, they're, they're firm in certain ways and I make sure to respect them, but I have a lot of leeway. And, and I worked at Disneyland for years, so they knew, okay, Caitlin understands the branding. She understands the character integrity. She understands the magic behind it and what you kind of want to protect and what you want to share where appropriate. So I think that also helped with casting too, because they knew they could trust me. What did you do at Disneyland? I was a, out here at Disney World, they call them handlers, but over in Disneyland, we were hosts. So we, I was a character host. and. Our nickname were the Mickey Prince because we had these white shirts with red Mickeys, and that's what we wear now when they're when they go out with the characters. These days, after the pandemic, they wear that outfit. But we used to kind of wear whatever the Lands outfit was, which was a lot of fun. But there is a nice simplicity of like, oh, there's somebody wearing that shirt and those pants. I they have a character. Let's talk to them. And then out here, they're blueberries because they wear little blue shirts. <laughs> so and I it, it, I like seeing those differences. Because uh, I feel like you know I never left the park even when we go to the when we go to Disneyland for fun or go to Disney World for fun like it's I feel like I'm still working or like that kid's climbing up there you should come down and walk away <laughs> I'm not there anymore but. do you get Disney perks I do um, like I can go into the park for free or we can get discounts on cruises or or hotel trips I just have to call a certain number through the character line and they'll be like oh sure let's help get you set up so a, a few ho hoops to jump through but i do get some nice perks and benefits that way all right well any final thoughts before we uh we let you go besides please go see her at her table <laughs> if you have not already also we're at a good time we're between the turtles and warwick Davis. you mentioned frozen 2. yeah i did oh i did a uh, looping on that movie and adr and looping is where when you watch a movie and like there's a dining scene and, and two couple, the two lead actors are talking to each other and you see people in the background, they're kind of fuzzy, but like they're nodding along and talking, but you can't hear them. You hear like the dull roar of human conversation that we kind of tune out every day. But if, you, if it wasn't there, you'd notice. Yeah. So 
the ADR loop groups will go in and we'll make up dialogue for the people in the restaurant. Like, and we'll watch like, okay, she's nodding her head. She leans forward and then she starts laughing. It's like, okay, make something up. Like, oh, I know what that's like. I lost my foot in the war too. <laughs> so you have to make something up to match their movements because they're not saying anything in the actual film. So we'll record dialogue or screams or yells or animals or creatures for this background work and then the sound mixer will dull it down and you won't hear specifics too often unless needed, but it just, it helps to make it more natural. Mm -hmm. So for Frozen 2, there, there's that one scene where the king is kind of giving, it, it, the flashback is happening and the king's narrating, but you hear the dull talking and the dull conversation of the characters from the past. So we're in there talking, we're like, Scott Menville was in on it, so his character is kind of riding something on the water, and when it jumps him off to shore, he, you hear him go like, whoa. <laughs> so it, it, it's little things like that, and looping, I enjoy looping a lot. So that's, that's struck at the moment, you know, for, our, for all our contracts, so I can't talk about the projects I was doing, but that's what ADR and looping is. So I can tell you what it is. Well, let's give one more huge round of applause. Thank you.